Hey guys, we're back with more Death Stranding. It's Monday. Um, I didn't play it all over the weekend, so here we are. But uh, we got some emails to read. First, we got Chiral Nightmares from The Geologist. Dear Sam, thanks to you, the chiral contamination's all cleared up. Nasty symptoms, though. Dizziness, head headaches, insomnia. At first, I was worried it was all down to my isolation in this shelter and the intense focus on my research for the past year. But it got real bad when the nightmares started. I saw the end of the world, a portal to the beach opening, and BTs pouring through by the thousands. There was nowhere to run, no time, and they began scooping us up one by one, and then the void outs came. Bigger and bigger until a massive one, or several massive ones, enveloped the whole world, and poof, just like that. When I heard Hartman about it, he likened it to the visions of extinction doom sufferers tend to experience. It's strange, though, after all. We now have incontrovertible proof that Chirelium is far from a recent addition to our world. Anyway, that's a problem for another a different day. The important thing is that I'm cured, and it's all thanks to you. Dear Mr. My dear Mr. Sam Bridges, once again it is I, Peter Englert, and once again I must implore you to fulfill an urgent request. I speak, of course, of pizza. Before you declare me unforgivably selfish, know that on this occasion I write you on behalf of my elderly father, who has been fiendishly out of sorts of late, and has been or has even divulged to me his dreams of the beach. You can imagine how I felt upon hearing such dreadful news. I fear he may not be uh, long for this earth, and that, and that being the case, I cannot bear the thought that he might shuffle off this mortal coil, having never sampled the transcendental delights you deliver. Could you help me grant him this final kindness by ferrying the dish in question from Mountain Knot City? My father has spoken of his fondness for salami. If you could ensure that this last supper is topped with a copious serving of said sausage, he would die a happy man indeed. I am sure. Sam, do you recall the handprint you brought me? Well, I hope you're sitting down, because when I analyzed it, I discovered that it was 65 million years old. It dates back to the late Creta Cretaceous period, when the dinosaurs became extinct. I did fear that perhaps it was just the rock, and that the handprint itself had been added much later, but that seems not to be the case. Could someone have traveled through time via the beach in order to leave it? If not, how could it possibly have been made? I plan to look into the matter further, and we'll get in touch with you when I learn more. If you happen to stumble across anything that might shed light on this mystery, you'll let me know too, won't you? No. Thanks for delivering the coat and boots. Thanks for picking up Dead Man's Coat and Boots! They were loaners of a size we don't stock in excess. In fact, it's so rare that someone asked for them that we only had the one set. Anyway, we'll give them a good wash before placing them in the storage. You took good care of yourself, Sam. The Mountaineer. Thanks for helping me out back there, Sam. Out of curiosity, have you had a chance to use the climbing anchor I, I, I gave you? It's pretty special, you know. The missus used to use it. We, it was custom made b b for her by Kyle Craftman. It's super light and durable, and the thing just the thing for rough terrain like this. She wants you to have it. Her way of thinking, thanking you for helping her to bring out our baby boy into the world. He's, here's hoping uh, you get plenty of use out of it. How do you... Wait, how am I using it if she used to use it because if that's the case then she would have had to have dismantled it when picking it up and then it would be gone wait is that the other one I think it is all right this is usually how we start the streams by getting the reading out of the way and learning about it. Neanderthals not extinct. Both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens are believed to share common ancestors in the form of Homo heidelbergensis. Bergensis. I've never heard that word before, so interesting. But there are clear differences between the two. Neanderthals were British and brawny, well equipped to hunt larger animals and survive in colder climates, whereas Homo sapiens were slender limbed and only capable of hunting smaller prey. But as millennia pass, Homo sapiens learned to create tools and hunt in packs. The Neanderthals, who actually had larger brains than the Homo sapiens, also fashioned tools of their own. But these were crude in comparison and developed little over 200,000 years. Perhaps because these simple-minded fa uh, beings favored small family units, so that even if a breakthrough occurred, it was unlikely to be shared with others. This isolation more than any other factor, seems to have led to their decline. Homo sapiens, meanwhile, conceived religion with 
which large numbers of individuals could be bound together in service to a common cause. Strength in numbers also made their communities more resistant to famine and other calamities. In other words, Homo sapiens grew stronger through interpersonal connections by creating what came to be known as, uh, came to be called society. If we persist in our divided state, we risk losing this hard-won unity and dooming ourselves to the near to false fate. We will dwindle and die, apart and alone. But history holds another intriguing lesson. Homo sapiens did not disdain Neanderthals. The two species eventually even intermingled on occasion. Our DNA retains vestiges of our ancient cousins even now. So you see, while the species itself may disappear, its genetic legacy may yet endure. Yeah, I was going to say uh, from the beginning there, or from reading through that, that uh, that's kind of what the uh, preppers are doing right now. They're going off and living on their own, and people aren't being, but babies aren't being born. Some babies. The evolution of life on Earth could be described as the evolution of consciousness. When the first vertebrates cl clambered out of the oceans and onto the land, their consciousness expanded to process the new realm they lay before them. Or that lay before them. But the development did not end there. Their eyes moved from flanks to their front and they might compre uh, that they might comprehend the depth of the world. Mammals formed groups, increasing the chances of survival. Eventually, they came together in communities and then large societies. In order to preserve and maintain these structures, humans developed a perception of time. And in order to, for societies to outlast the lifespan of the individual, we conceive of an afterlife and a future beyond ourselves. Alas, the Death Stranding threatens to undo all of our progress. Consider the chiral network, which incorporates the beach, where time does not exist. Or, consider timefall, which rapidly accelerates the degradation of what that, that which it comes into contact with. How can our sense of time, honed over millions of years, remain intact when we must sco uh, cope with the irrational phenomenon? Yet, there is the tip of the, yet that is the tip of the proverbial iceberg. We are growing apart, retreating into isolation, gradually losing our place within society. I would even go so far as to say our conceptions of reality are under threat. How could they not be when our very eyes deny the invisible BT that stands before us? The stranding has warped our consciousness in every sense. If the evolution of life on Earth is indeed akin to the evolution of consciousness, then what is happening now is undeniably a regression, is it not? There is one caveat, of course. Some of us are now are far more aware of death than we ever were. That is what Dooms has given us. For me, therefore, Dooms is not merely a biological change. I prefer to think of it as the means by which I have achieved a new form of consciousness. Furthermore, I hope to believe that this new awareness and other is humanity's trump card as we seek to defeat the death stranding. Unbilical cords in Devonian era fossils. An article from an old scientific journal was recently brought to my attention. It predates the Death Stranding and concerns the discovery of a 380 million year old fossil, one from the Devonian era, to give the period its proper name. It was a fossil of a fish, and in its womb was a child, a child connected to its mother by an umbilical cord, no less. The species? Matterpiscus atenborii. It's a plesoderm, an extinct class of armored marine creature that used to live in the seas the world over. Unfortunately, most were wiped out during the Devonian era, right around the time of the second of the Big Five, in fact. As you may, may be aware, one of the key foci of my research is the link between creatures with umbilical cords and mass extinctions. Once the area is connected to the chiral network, it is my hope that we will be able to piece together more data that will help us learn more about the link between the umbilical cords and the death stranding. Astral Eden. How you doing, my friend? Welcome to today's stream. Interview with the geologist. One year ago. I remember it was just before I joined the expedition when I found those documents in Bridges HQ. Research papers that predated the death stranding. People used to believe that dinosaurs had gone extinct at the end of the Cretace Cretaceous period, 65 million years ago. But when this fellow investigated various locations where the late Cretaceous dino fossils had been found, he came to the sudden, sudden conclusion that there was hardly any evidence anywhere on Earth that supported the theory that dinosaurs had survived until the end of the Cretaceous. In other words, almost all of them had been wiped out long before that. The only place where the fossils did, that did support the traditional theory was here, in North America, which suggests that this is the last part of the Earth to have been inhabited by dinosaurs. Not everyone agreed that this with this analysis at the time, but let's say that he let's say he had it right. That would mean that there was evidence of a mass extinction hidden here, right beneath our feet. Evidence which could prove invaluable in understanding the one on the horizon. 
Did the dinosaurs who happen to live here just get lucky? Or is there something special about this place that allowed them to survive? I'd love to get to the bottom of it, but I'm not sure I have what it takes. I'm not like Hartman. I don't have dooms or any of that uni other unique traits. Still, I want to be make myself useful. I want to research the stranding and help uncover the truth behind it. That's why I joined the expedition team, after all. Fending off the flu, getting rid of the fever and body aches, just suffering from sneezes and coughs. Um, my dad likes um, this lemon drink, Leo Neo Citron. I don't know if you guys can get that where you are, um, but... It tends to really help with uh, cold and flus, so if you want to give it a shot and take a look for it. But uh, I, I hope you feel better. I saw you talking to Arena about it on uh, on Discord there. Definitely feel better. But hang out in the stream with us, because we like having you here. In the period since the first form uh, forms of life rose here on Earth, the planet has witnessed a number of mass extinctions, and as you noted aware, the most significant of these are known as the Big Five. The first marked the end of the Ordovi Ordovician period. I don't know why I can't read that word. Ordovician. Uh, while the next, at the end of the Devonian period, wiped out almost all marine life. But the third of these extinctions, at the end of the Permian period, and around 250 million years ago, was even worse. 96% of all marine organisms and 70% of all land organisms died as a result. The fourth extinction finished off most large reptiles. Though the dinosaurs managed to hold until the fifth came along at the end of the Cretaceous period, 65 million years ago. We humans are evolved from the small mammals which managed to survive that particular catastrophe. Each of these five extinctions resulted from enormous changes to the natural environment. Species which were unable to adapt to these changes perish, while those that were ideally suited to evolve and thrive did just that. Evidence from uh, records which predate the Death Stranding indicate that many scholars believe a six max extinction is on its way, or was on its way, or that it is, uh, may have already begun. There was something of a consensus regarding its cause as well, humanity's destruction of the environment. This led them to sound the alarm, warning the world of what was at stake. At the time, the greatest minds of the area believed that if the ecosystem could be preserved and if human humanity could learn to live in harmony with nature, then a future could be secured for all the world's species, humans included. But that was then and this is now. If the phenomenon we are currently experiencing is indeed the sixth extinction, then it must be acknowledged that humanity is its main target. Is this divine punishment for our misdeeds? If so, then I suppose there is little that can be done. Perhaps there is no way forward for humanity now. Nevertheless, I refuse to give up. I will endeavor to find hope in our predicament. I guess that's one thing that would set humans aside, uh, aside apart from dinosaurs, assuming dinosaurs aren't as... Uh, Intelligent as uh, mankind. Sneezing triggers you to cough. Okay, can I go back and reconnect to the online server? I guess I had it just left it in sleep mode for a while. There. Okay. Let's check on the BB. Check on Lou. So we've learned a little more about Sam. Apparently he was married. Uh oh. Another creepy baby moment. He's gonna have Deadman's face. Aw oh, man, I got 84 players that are pleased with me. Anyway, what'd you, what, what'd you get up to this weekend, Astral? You excited for FF D&D? We're gonna be playing it on the 7th.
use the sink. Excellent. Why? I can't fathom why anybody would just hop up and sit on the sink like that. That's weird. Looks like nobody's finished the bridges uh, or the roads I was working on. That sucks. I was hoping somebody would finish at least one of these. Particularly this one. Need some chiral crystals. Needs less than 500 metals and 1,234. Yeah. Alright, so I have to go over here and get this chick her... Before we do that, though, let's go down here. We're gonna leave our stuff in the private locker, and then we're gonna use Fragile to warp over to um, another area Good morning, Sam. and we'll wait for Wintry to get up okay so this is the one we're probably gonna warp to Wait, no, ah, I hit the wrong button. Sorry. We want to go to this one here, Gura052. Okay, there we go. Been a while, Sam. It's good to see you. Remember how to do this? You need to close your eyes and picture your destination. Messaging me. Why is my phone going off? Give me a sec here. Okay. Billy's laying on the bed, being a little. Okay, sorry about that. We're ready to go now. Alright, so like I said, I'm coming here. Uh, I, I, the reason I've teleported here is because I want to get a, um, a car set up here. 
I may already have one saved here. In this garage. Huh. May skip this, depending on what it is. We've already seen a bunch of these, so... Like I said, I'm checking this. I don't have any of my stuff with me, but that's okay. I shouldn't need it for what I want to do here. Okay, good. There is a vehicle here. We shall need it. Okay, so. This person's bridge is playing music. The reason I'm going here is because. We're gonna deliver that pizza. It'd be a lot easier if that road was finished, though. Which actually, now that I think about it, hang on a sec. I have an idea. I have an idea on how we might finish this road. Might not work out for us, but gives me something to do to wake up and get the blood, the creative blood uh, flowing. First, we're going to need a vehicle. in here in the vehicle and it's not charged at all. Alright, so what I'm doing is uh, we're going to go over to the photo uh, photographer's place. She, she's just over here and she may actually have the materials we need to upgrade our, uh, our, our, uh, road there. Because our one road there requires us to have a whole bunch of, uh, chiro- chiro- how many chiro- do I even have, actually? Can I see? 1,000? Oh, I have more than enough. Okay, we're good. Anyway. Uh, it requires us to have some chiral crystals, but on top of chiral crystals, uh, we need, I think, somewhere around 500 metal and uh, 1,200 and something ceramics. 
So if we could get any of those. If we can get any of those, that would save me some. Okay, good. I'm in the right. I'm on the right path. Okay. Hopefully, she has enough ceramics. That's gonna be the uh, most likely fail point. Although she might not have any, because I might have already taken them. Damn it, she only has 800 ceramics. Fuck. Alright, well, let's grab the metal then. It's fine. So what we're doing is we're going to go and build this road. I'm kind of surprised it wasn't built over the weekend, but at the same time I'm not surprised. It's kind of scary going around that corner. Okay, so, like I said, we're going to start the building of this road. Then I'm going to head back up to Mountain uh, City. We're going to grab the pizza and some uh, ceramics. Hopefully I have enough ceramics left to build the remainder of this road. Because this particular road requires a ton of items. And it'll allow me to very easily get by the mules, I think. I think, I think. So now we need a little under 400 ceramics. We need 300 or 436 actually, or 34, 434. Very important we get this particular road built because it'll let us get by these uh, mules easier, I think. Unless it drops off, in which case that's not good. But in any case... Drop this guy off in the uh... There you go. Storing vehicle. Okay, 
So, I know I was, uh, that took a few moments extra of our time today. And I'm gonna stop our recording here.